Well, how are you, Brenda? I'm awesome. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. You have a good day. I mean, Mercedes Benz, Tennessee, two new brand AMG cars. What can be better? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. We are driving uh, here in Tennessee. We're just at the entrance of the famous uh, Dragon Tail. Yeah, road. Tail of the Dragon. The Tail of the Dragon, I'm sorry. Which is a pretty amazing road. Uh, two brand new cars from AMG, but this is like a different strategy for AMG, right? Yeah, so this is all new product line that we're really excited for, the AMG Sport models. Uh, really opening up the whole world of AMG to a new group of clients. Uh, you know, just as we're introducing models at the high end with our GTS, with our S65 Cabriolet, we're also making investments and in opening up the product lineup at the other end with our new AMG Sport models as well. Yeah, so this is uh, like, um not a new sub brand, but it's like a new line of models within AMG. Yeah, so I think the easiest way to think about it is, just as with Mercedes Benz, you have a whole spectrum of vehicles, right? You have an E250, all the way up to an E550, and many models in between. Yeah. Uh, the same is true now with AMG. So we look at a C-Class, for instance, we have a C450, we have a C63, and we have a C63S model. So we have a whole spectrum of AMG models, available within each portfolio as well. Okay, so this uh, fill up a gap, let's say, between like the regular Mercedes-Benz car and the top of the line of uh, AMG, not yeah. only in performance, but also in price, which is a really attractive thing for people who can maybe not get into a new AMG car, but now there's this option. You're absolutely right. I mean, historically, the price jump to go from the top of the line Mercedes-Benz to the AMG model, would be anywhere from 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars sometimes, yeah. right? That's a big gap in our portfolio, and now the AMG Sport models fill that gap. Okay, so and they're not batch sport. I mean, it's just like a, a, a way to identify them. So they're a batch like this one, example that we're driving to GLE 450 AMG. AMG. Okay. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. We we. The class of vehicles, or the portfolio of vehicles, we refer to as the AMG Sport models. Okay. But the individual cars, we don't call them the Sport version. It's, as you said, the GLE 450 AMG Coupe, for instance. Okay, now we're driving the GLE, which the GLE is a new model overall for Mercedes-Benz, right? I mean, this is not a, the, the, what used to be the ML, right? Yeah, so the vehicle we're in is all new, the GLE Coupe. Um, there is an SUV variant of this chassis, and that is what used to be the ML, okay. is now called the GLE. Exactly. Because all, that, the, all the SUV crossovers changed names uh, last year, right? That's correct, yes. Yeah, correspond so. with the uh, class of like C-class right. and all that. So, so the first two letters, GL, tells you it's an SUV. The last letter tells you which family it's part of. So GLA, GLC, GLE. Okay. So. Tell us about this one uh, in terms of performance. What's, what makes it an AMG car? As with any AMG, we kind of go through and touch so many parts of the vehicle. There's over 500 unique parts of the vehicle that make it an AMG. So that's the suspension system. We have an AMG aromatic suspension system in the vehicle. The braking system is an AMG high performance braking system. The exhaust note, which I'm sure you experienced earlier yeah, today, is awesome, isn't it? Absolutely, especially when you go to the to the Sport Plus mode of driving mode, which we'll try in a little while, but like, well, go ahead, yeah. Exactly, you're absolutely right. So, you know, highly emotional exhaust you expect from AMG. The motor, 362 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds out of a SUV that weighs over 5,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty impressive. So uh, this is not obviously a cosmetic uh, change from the regular model. This is, I mean, you just mentioned like a long list of, uh, of features that come from the AMG engineering team in Germany. Absolutely. Um, and one thing to take note of as well is this particular model, Javi, the GLE Coupe, yeah. is only available as an AMG in the US. So oh, we have okay. the GLE 450 AMG Coupe and the GLE 63S Coupe. Okay, and the difference in horsepower and engines and all that, what, what, what's between those two models? So, when you go to the GLE 63S coupe model, you're at 577 horsepower on that vehicle. Uh, and that one will do 0 to 60 in just under 5 seconds. Amazing. And this one has the V Turbo V6 3 liter with 362 horsepower? That's correct, yeah. Amazing. So, we are, as, as we said, we're at the entrance of the 
this famous road and uh, I hope you don't get car sick. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be because of the car, it would be because of me. <laughs> so. No, no, I'm, I'm good. This is an incredible road that's really exciting to be on. And the other model that we are, are driving today it's the C450, which is more or less the same specs, but obviously in a four-door car, four, four -door car. That's correct. So it's the same engine in both cars, uh, the same bi-turbo V6 motor, uh, same output on both of them. Uh, both of them use the EMD Performance 4MATIC system, so they're both all-wheel drive with a rear-wheel bias. So you still get the very sporty, uh, emotional drive in the vehicle. Uh, and just as on this vehicle, on the C450, everything I mentioned, the suspension, The transmission, we touch all of that and make it a proper AMG. Okay. And that one, the C450 starts at a, what price point? Uh, 50800 yeah. So very, very uh, good uh, price. Yeah, for what, really you, hard for what you get. I mean, like it's, it's a lot of car with a lot of high performance uh, features. So yeah. it's, it's really good price. You know, and obviously, I mean, there are like there are different options for uh, like in any other model of from course. Mercedes Benz, right? Yeah, but something we were very focused on was you know, the C450 AMG is entering a segment of the market we've never competed in before. And it's a segment of the market that some of the competitors have been competing in for quite some time and do very yeah. well in. So we felt very, very strongly that if we're gonna come in to this segment that already has some very strong legacy vehicles in it, we need to come in with an incredible product, which I think we have, with incredible performance, which the vehicle definitely delivers on, at a great value. Because it could be an incredible car, but if it's overpriced, yeah. people not, are going to stay with what they gonna, know. Yeah, exactly. They're going to stay with what they know. And I think we've hit a home run on, on all three of those. And I mean, you've been hitting home runs with AMG for a long time here in the U.S., which is your number one market in the world, right? And you've been doing great over the past few years. It is. So AMG is still the number one market in the world. Uh, excuse me, U.S. is still the number one market in the world for AMG uh, by more than two and a half times that of the second closest nation. And with these new products, obviously that, that uh, great success in the business part is going to obviously increase because you're going to obviously sell many more cars, hopefully. Yeah, so, so year to date, um, same vehicle sales are up year over year on AMG. Uh, but when we incorporate the two new AMG Sport models, one of which, uh, the one we're in right now, the GLE Coupe, has been on sale for about five weeks. Uh, and then the C450, which has been on sale for about two weeks. Uh, our sales are up nearly 30% this year, year over well, year. Immediately, yeah. So I guess this is a strategy that's going to continue in other models maybe in the future? Yeah, I think you know, just as today uh, we offer an AMG variant in most of the Mercedes lineup, uh, I think you can expect to see similar strategy with our AMG Sport models where we'll have a AMG Sport model in most of the Mercedes lineup. Great. So. Um, as we were mentioning before, this car has uh, how many uh, driving modes? Four, right? So, we have, we have five, we have four pre programmed modes, plus a fifth one, which is individual, which allows you to customize the vehicle setup to you the way you like it. How do you like your suspension set versus your steering versus your throttle response? Uh, allows you to customize it to what you want. And, like in that case, uh, how much does the driver have to know in terms of? Uh, technical specs of the car and like, uh, I mean, how easy is that to, to set it up? Uh, so it's it's quite simple. Um, I think the first thing you would do is drive it in comfort, see what you like about the car, drive it in sport, see which aspects of the vehicle you like. Is it is it too stiff? Is it not stiff enough yet? How's the throttle response? How's the steering response? All that. Then try it in sport plus and get all that feeling. And then when you go to the individual, you know, okay, I like my suspension to be really stiff, Okay. I like a, a medium throttle response, uh, and I like my steering to be uh, nice and comfortable. So you don't you don't need to be a Mercedes-Benz engineer to make no. like, calculations? No, <laughs> not at all. We keep it nice and simple. So even in the individual mode, we use the same exact terminology. So the drive select is comfort, sport, sport plus. When you're going through and you say, how do you want your suspension? Do you want to set up like it is in comfort, sport, or sport plus? Yeah. How do you want your throttle response? Excellent. Well, we're going to enjoy here. Uh, trail the dragon trail and uh let's see how how we do i mean how i do i know the car is going to do well i mean it's a very <laughs> very technical it's, it's even more difficult than a racetrack sometimes because obviously you don't know what's coming you have no on your way and it's kind of narrow and and really twisty so very challenging yes yeah, phenomenal road it's a pleasure to be here with you today oh thank you very much so we'll uh, we'll drive back and we'll talk at the end of the of the road we're 
Still okay. Sounds good. We're well, running a beautiful day. Uh, we've driven uh, more or less like 50, 60 miles on the way back from the, that was where we started. And uh, excellent performance in this car. I mean, it's a big car, but it's like really very agile. Yeah, I think a lot of that actually has to do with the driver. I think the driver did a fantastic <laughs> job. No, I, I mean, the technology of <laughs> that car. Especially playing with the modes. I mean, you can, I mean, this is one of the things that uh, I, I, I noticed in the Mercedes products. When you change from comfort to sport, you really feel something different. And some other brands, they have that kind of uh, driving modes. And it's sometimes it works, but sometimes you don't feel anything. And here's like a huge difference between each of them. Agreed. I mean, that was definitely a focus during the development was to make sure that you could really feel the differences and have essentially multiple cars in one. You can have yeah. that comfort mode, that daily driver, the sport for a little bit more spirited driving, and sport plus when you want to be really aggressive, like on the tail of the dragon. Well, well, thank you very much for your time and for letting us experience this thing. And uh, so a lot of good things uh, and great things coming in the near future for AMG here in the US and all over the world, right? Absolutely, and uh, I'm happy we were able to share it with you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, See you next time. Friend.